Hey friends, my name is Chris and I am on staff here at The Village and I'd love to welcome you to worship this morning. Before we get started, a couple of things. We would love for you to go to thevillagenashville.com slash live. There you'll find a connect card. It's a quick form where you can fill out a little bit of information so we can get to know more about you. You can get to know a little bit more about us and we'll be in contact with you about everything that's happening here at The Village and all the ways that you can get involved in this faith community. We'd also love for you, if you are on YouTube, to click that like button as well as that subscribe button and the bell icon. And all those things together will make sure that you don't miss a thing here at The Village as well as help share these videos and let more people experience the love of Jesus through that channel. So as we get started this morning, we hope you had a wonderful Christmas celebrating with friends and family. We love seeing you all at our drive-in services as well as online for Christmas Eve. And today, because it's so close to Christmas, we're gonna do things a little differently. Today will be a short service. We'll start with a song in just a moment and then hear a quick message from Pastor Travis Garner. Um, before concluding the service. Um, so we hope you enjoy this, this short time of worship together. And I'd like to challenge you with one thing this morning. I know as I look forward to the end of this year and into next year that I'm kind of holding out hope that things just get inevitably better in 2021, that 2020 was a fluke, that things happened and they were out of our control, but with the year's end comes a new beginning. And while it's okay to hope for those things, I shouldn't rest my hope in that. I should be resting my hope in Jesus. And so that is my challenge to you this morning. In what ways during this time and throughout your week, can you be sure to better rely on Jesus, to better put your hope on Jesus, to not arbitrarily assign a, a new year with new opportunities and, and better outcome on just the flip of a calendar, but instead, be willing to and expectant in God being at work in 2021 in ways that you can't even imagine. So I'm not saying don't go into this new year without hope. I'm saying go into this new year with hope that Jesus will be at work and work in your own life to make sure that that is a possibility, that you're open to how God is at work in your life and in your community. And that starts right here and right now. So as we go into this time of worship, how can you be present? How can you be expectant? And how can you be open to what God may be willing to say to you today? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time of worship that we have together. Please be present. Please be willing to speak to us this morning and please open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to receive what you have to say. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this incredible gift that is your son. It's in your son's precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come. Sing in exaltation 
Here we are. It's the last Sunday of 2020. And there was a loud chorus of amens that rang out from all the people in all the places. <laughs> uh, well, setting that aside for a minute, if it's okay with you, I want to travel down memory lane for a minute. The village started almost five years ago with a big dream. January 10th, 2016, we launched weekly worship and we said on repeat, it's not a small vision. And so we stepped out in faith and Amanda and I gathered with people in our living room and together we poured ourselves into the community and we invested in the schools and we prayed and we invited and we invested time and energy and effort and sweat and tears and we hired staff and we started groups and we bought equipment and we prayed and we invited some more and we dreamed and we laughed and we felt the nervous anticipation of those first Sundays and we wondered if anyone would show up and beyond our expectations, people showed up and resources showed up and God showed up in ways that we didn't expect and people's lives were changed and we built houses and we dug wells and we fed kids and so many more things than that than I can even remember and God showed up in every bit of it. Now we've hit some challenges along the way and we've had some normal growing pains, but we found repeatedly that when we've come upon some kind of roadblock or some kind of barrier, that no matter what it was, God has been able to see around it in ways that we weren't always able to see. And so we've prayed some more and we, we bought some land and we designed a building and we invested in a dream for a future beyond ourselves. And I came into this year, 2020, with renewed hope and renewed energy and renewed commitment. I had a lot of exciting 2020 vision and I thought I was so clever about that. And, and so we talked with our leaders and we talked with our staff team about the fact that this was a have to kind of year, that the, the mission was urgent, that people's lives hung in the balance, that we couldn't ignore the task that God had put in front of us. And so at the beginning of the year, it it kind of became a mantra of mine as I said enthusiastically to our staff team, this is the year, this is the year. And then not at all in the way that I anticipated, we found out that this was indeed the year. It just wasn't the year that we expected. I mean, nobody had 2020 vision like this. 
And so at this point, for all of the things that people disagree about, I bet we can all agree on this. We are 2020 would out. I mean, all of us have dealt with some kind of loss, some of it unexpected and heartbreaking. We've dealt with economic uncertainty, political and racial division, isolation, frustration, loneliness, anger, and a global health crisis like nothing we've ever experienced. I mean, this has been the year, all right. Next time, I'll, I'll try to be a little more specific when I come up with an annual motto. And now, at the almost five-year mark of our church, I'm feeling some simultaneous things. One of the things I'm feeling that I know I'm not alone in feeling right now is tired. I mean, after four years of church in a school and now nine months of church in a pandemic, I'll admit that I'm a little worn out. And I know that you are worn out too. I mean, and this isn't a, this isn't a woe is me, I'm so tired moment. It's just an honest recognition that it's been a year for all of us. And the, the best analogy I can think of to describe this year for so many of us is that it's been like swimming through mud, thick mud. <laughs> Well, the Apostle Paul had had a year as well. I'm sure it started with big dreams and big vision, but at some point he found himself locked in prison. He'd been beaten and arrested and chained to a guard. He was awaiting trial. He was actually unsure if he was going to live or if he was going to die. And he'd been separated from the people in, a, in, a, in the church in a place called Philippi, people that he loved so much. And he was unable to meet with them and sing with them and pray with them and, and do all of the things that make a church feel like a church. And in that moment, he took the chance to say something to the people in the church. A church that he helped to start something that I want to say to you today. Something I realize I really haven't stopped to say to you enough this year. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, these words from the Apostle Paul express the way I feel about you from the book of Philippians chapter 1 when Paul says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all of my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Now, wait just a second. I, I thought you just said he was in prison and he'd been beaten and was chained to a guard and he didn't know if he was going to live or if he was going to die. I mean, didn't he mean to say, dearest Philippians, help. I mean, that's probably what I would have written, you know. Village people, get me out of here. <laughs> but that's not what he wrote. And that's not what he said, because Paul understood that thankfulness isn't circumstantial. For Paul, at least, thankfulness wasn't based on circumstances. It was based on something far greater than that. I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers. For all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. For Paul, thankfulness wasn't based on a momentary circumstance. It was based on an eternal promise that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. If there's any good in you, if there's any good around you, God did that. He began a good work in you. And if God began a good work in you, God will carry it on to completion. God will be faithful to complete it. If God has ever begun good in you or around you, village people, God will be faithful to complete it. It might get messy in the middle, but, but Paul's thankfulness or lack of thankfulness wasn't based on the circumstances of the messy middle. It was based on the faithfulness and the promises of God. I thank my God every time I remember you and all my prayers for you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, this is a year that a lot of us have been living in the messy middle. And, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about the year, reflecting on my own leadership and on where we are and on how things are, are not exactly where I hoped they would be at this point in the journey. And, and I found myself looking in the mirror and asking some hard questions, some honest questions, questions I think people in any sphere of life are asking this year. 
And, and while I've sometimes been frustrated and while I've sometimes felt disheartened and while I've sometimes felt discouraged by the circumstances, there's a lot of reason for hope as we look toward new year. But the primary source of my hope isn't circumstantial. It's this. Village people, God has begun a good work in you. And it's, it's so clear to me that God has begun a good work in you and I have hope because I can't unsee what I've seen. I can't unsee that initial vision that we shared together of a church that's here in our community to reach the 60,000 people who don't have a church home. I can't unsee the memory of, of who knows how many weeks in a row where people came to the front of the gym at Sunset Middle School to be baptized and to join the church and to give their lives to following Jesus. I can't unsee the idea and the emerging reality of becoming a church so deeply entrenched in the life of the community, seeking its flourishing that we would be desperately missed if we weren't here. I can't unsee the dream of being a church plant that makes disciples who plant churches that make an impact in their own communities so deep that they would be missed if they weren't here. I can't unsee the vision of helping people who feel far from God or disconnected from the church connect to Jesus and a community of Jesus followers. I can't unsee the idea that a new church in a growing city filled with closing churches might be a spark that helps to reignite a movement of the multiplication of the gospel in a way that changes hearts and lives and families and neighborhoods for generations to come. And so, yeah, I'm tired and I'm frustrated and I'm often at a loss for what to do or what to say next. We all are, but I can't unsee what I've seen because God has begun a good work in you. And where I'm feeling extraordinarily thankful is in the fact that this isn't just a distant memory from, you know, back in 19 when we used to be able to gather at the school and act like a real church. One of the primary things that sparks hope in me and gratitude for you is the fact that you've never stopped acting like a real church even this year. Even in an unprecedentedly difficult year, you have rallied this year. You have responded. You have given generously so that we can continue to reach and serve our neighbors with the love of Jesus. And, and while you're able to see the, the ways that you've individually connected and given to the mission of our church with all of your gifts and resources, I actually have the distinct advantage and privilege of seeing the combination of all of your efforts together. And I couldn't be more thankful. I mean, when the tornadoes hit our area, you supplied more than a moving truck full of supplies to help people whose lives have been turned upside down. Because of your generosity, we've supported hundreds of teachers in our local schools this year with school supplies and masks and hand sanitizer and gift cards to help them respond to the unprecedented challenges in their classrooms. Through your giving and serving, we've supplied meals to first responders in COVID units in local hospitals in Nashville and Williamson County. This year, you've paid off thousands of dollars of school lunch debt for students in our local schools, and you've provided food to hundreds of families throughout the spring and summer when schools were canceled, and many of those families and those kids lost their primary source of food. Your generosity and your service have enabled our village kids and our village youth to go virtual things like Camp Village Kids and, and a Breaking the Silence suicide prevention event that's allowing our church to reach kids and youth and families literally across the country. Because you've continued to give and to serve, new people have connected to Jesus through our online worship in our own community, but also throughout Tennessee Illinois, North Carolina, New York, California, and even Austria. And when we've been unable to meet for worship at the school, groups have continued meeting and village gatherings have sprung up all over our community and online because over 30 of you have welcomed people into your driveway and your garage and your back porch so that people could stay connected to God and to each other. I mean, in March, we had one location of the village. This fall, we've had 30. That's a pretty good rate of multiplication, and it is all because of your willingness to give and adapt and serve and continue to further the mission of our church. 
I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And, and as a result of all of that, a few weeks ago, we had 10 new households of people become members of our church through a video call, making a commitment to wholeheartedly follow Jesus as part of the village one of whom has never attended an in-person service because she's only been part of our church in the last few months. And then to top it all off, many of you were there for this on October 18th. We held five groundbreaking ceremonies for our new building. And a year from now, we'll be taking up a permanent residence as a presence for God and for good in the corner of the community. Now, while 2020 hasn't been, or it has been a year, it hasn't stopped the mission of God from moving forward through you. And for that, I couldn't be more grateful. I am confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Paul goes on and he closes this section of the letter like this. He says, it is right for me to feel this way about you. Since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And then he prays a prayer that I'm praying for you as we turn the page on 2020 and begin a new chapter. He says, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I want you to know that you and your family and your loved ones are deeply in my prayers as we make our way to the end of this unexpected year. Keep hope alive, village people. God is good. God is working. God is faithful. God is with us. Let me pray for you. God, I can't say thank you enough for this amazing community of people, this church that we call the village. God, I thank you for that initial vision that we bought into together five years ago. I thank you for the stories that we have to share of the things that have happened, of the lives that have been changed, of the communities that are different because of the generosity and faithfulness of these people who call the village their church home. God, 2020 has been a year. It's not been the year we expected, but God, you have still been so good and so faithful to us. And I thank you for the continued generosity and faithfulness of the people in our church. God, as we look forward to 2021, I pray that you'd give us courage. I pray that you'd give us strength I pray that you'd give us hope. I pray that you'd give us faith in you. God, help us to give our lives to you and our hearts to you and our resources to you and everything that we have and everything that we are. Give us the courage that we need to follow Jesus wherever it is that he leads us in this next year and beyond. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Friends, it's been so good to be here with you today as we're wrapping up this year together. Happy New Year. I cannot wait to see you soon. Hey there, thanks so much for joining us today. If you're on YouTube, we wanna encourage you to hit the subscribe button and click that bell icon so that you don't miss a thing coming up here at The Village. Be sure to also head over to thevillagenashville.com so that you can learn more about our church, get connected to a community of people following Jesus together, and learn how you can support the ministries of this church financially. We hope you have a great week.